some people came in and they bought some drinks and they took them down and sat next to that big fire down there and within five minutes they got up from their seat, left the drinks and left the pub. So they went out through that door and one of my colleagues went out this door and said, is there anything wrong? They said, well, we've just seen someone walking out the fire. What? What? We've just seen someone walking out the fire, they said. So they left the pub. Now, I didn't say anything, but the story so is... There's ghosts here. The story is there's they left ghosts. the pub. There's ghosts. Do you believe there are ghosts? No. I, I'm prepared to accept there might be. See, I don't know whether I believe in ghosts or not, but if, if they're here, I don't want to offend them. That's the <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> This is the Royal Standard of England, the oldest tavern in the country, dating back 900 years. Can you imagine walking through here 900 years ago on a path? You meet this place and you're like, what is this? There's ales, there's food. Let's go inside. Woo, it's freezing right now. Hello. I've been in traffic, you know, the traffic in the village. That's right. In traffic in the village? How are you doing, Amelia? Good, good. Oh, wow. This is nice. No, no, this is dope, dude. This is gonna be amazing. So, how are you guys doing? Everything good? David, pleasure. Nice to meet you too. Yeah, yeah, no worries, no worries. So they're setting up for Christmas. Yeah, well, that meant to be done last week. Oh wow! Look at this. Nine hundred years. I've been coming here since I was four years old. Four years old? Wow. So I told them they need to come. Ah, okay. <laughs> So Amelia, tell me a little bit of the history of the house. Well, history, we're going to have a man who is starting at, I believe he's supposed to come at 11. He's very, very good with the history of it. Okay. So he's like our kind of mascot. He has a little heart on it and, uh, you know, we call him Mr. Murphy. Perfect. And he knows everything about what's happened. I've been here only three months, so I can't tell you as much. But you said this is the oldest part, the bar. Yes, that's the oldest part of the bar. And then... Um, Plus with that, of course, you know, all of this, that's mended, but all the bins. This is all the, what's all? The, that's the, the, the bits, what's been here. 900 years, all this, wow. all these fillers, dude. Yes, that's it's incredible. So we're waiting for the wise man, Mr. Murphy, to come. Uh, he's a little late. He's going to give us a history lesson of this beautiful tavern. Look at this building. It's insane. It's like, I'm, a, you know, Utrecht from Bebenberg. He's out here looking for a place to stay. Where do we go? We go inside. I need an ale. This is the oldest tavern in England. This is uh, King Charles' room. Oh, this is the entrance. Oh, okay, okay. Amelia, I need an ale. We're in the oldest tavern. We need an ale. I need an ale. What ale will you I think I'm going to go with this one over here. This one. And it's we the. Didn't know we have a, this over here. This. I <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, which one of these is good? This one. Well, I don't drink it. Okay, so it's award-winning ale, though. Have, this one and this one. This one is one. roasted nut. That's the beetroot. Um, this one is a Rebellion IPA. It's quite popular. Rebellion IPA. Yeah. People take it children as well, so it's like most of those those four well, what people get. I think I'll go with the roasted nuts. So roasted nuts is four point six percent. Not bad. That's making you happy. Yes, it makes me happy. Oh wow, look look at that. You have to like pump it. Yes. It's like an old style draft. Uh, yeah. what is this old trip? This looks old, old trip and it, it's quite, it's Mr. Murphy, what well, is not here yet. The favorite, I think so, but yeah, he always recommend. It. Okay, it's flat. One second. That's good. There you go. So that's the old trip. This is amazing. Like skulls over there, ancient maps over here. Got the fireplace, nice nutty ale. Oh, that's English. Oh, that's good. If these walls can talk, right? Yeah, it's amazing. Bro, and, the, and right there, that glass. See the, the gunpowder canisters too. No, and they have a map of England right there that... Those maps are insane. Man, they're, they're easy, they're 100 years old. Shop. No, no, this is like real old. Those are actual. It's just been sitting there for like, like 50 decades. Yeah. Because this looks like hand, handmade. 
not on my paper. Parchment. Centuries and centuries. But you're Matthew, yeah. the owner. Uh, I'm the owner. Hello. How are you doing, Hello. Matthew? Thank you. Everything good? Yes. Fantastic. Good. By the way, I'm loving this place. I'm mesmerized. Yeah. This is too much. We should have one of these in the States, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. If we can, I mean, we uh, don't have this history. Not old enough country. <laughs> yeah, we're not old enough. We're not old enough. Where are you guys from? Uh, so I'm from Miami. There's a sort of a, an American accent behind your accent. Yeah, yeah. my accent is like, so I speak Spanish and Italian. That's so Spanish it, it's, uh, <laughs> si, hablo en español. Si, hablo español. Un poco. Un poco, buenísimo. Yeah. And where are you from? Uh, I'm from London, I guess. But my father's from Ireland. My mother was one of the Brits that built the empire. Okay. Sc Scottish in, in India and all over the world. Wow. So, we, uh, yes, the gene pool spread all over. Uh, Fantastic. The English speaking peoples. How about that? Love that, love uh, that. And how did you come up with this place? Like, how did you get it? Um, I did a degree in literature and philosophy. And what do you do with that? I've always loved food, so food and drink. And after university, I uh, joined a, um, a wine company and just took to it. So, so you work for a, as a manager for another companies and you learn your trade mm -hmm. uh, and then you go, must do this for myself. Must, because every time I'd go to a place, I'd double the turnover. Oh, wow. So you start thinking, hmm, hmm. So, uh, so you're making the money. Yeah, so you're making the money for a big, big company. Uh, my, in fact, my wife bought me here when we were courting. Uh, I said, well, come to the oldest pub. <laughs> and here we are. Uh, so, I, yeah, talking to a group, group of guys, friends, and ooh, we've got to, you know, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. So, um, this popped up for sale 20 years ago. The menu, has it changed when you took it over? Uh, not really, no, it hasn't changed. Basically, it's my mother's cooking. You cook everything from fresh, cook things you expect to see in a pub. You feel that this is the food. People come here, they want to eat British food. Was it 11? Is that what it is? Could be. It's Might be your lucky cool. <laughs> it's too early. <laughs> so you got fish and chips. Um, and chips. I saw a bunch of the menu and I think it looks it's amazing. Just, it's just British classics. Fish and chips, um, steak and kidney pudding. So it's a steamed pudding, it's a pie. Ooh. Kidney uh, pudding. Yeah, well, awful. Midsummer murder Midsummer pie. Midsummer murder pie. What's um, the story here? TV, TV um, detective show. One of those British shows that all the way around the world. Well, there's a, there's a picture of um, Morse. I see. It's, it's still sat there for about two years now. The entire tavern. What's the oldest section? She was telling me right there. Uh, the oldest part is probably there's a brick wall that's okay. made of just. I mean, what, what is that like? Uh, is that 900 years? Like this? Yeah, I mean, the oldest, that, that wall there. This wall? Yeah. Right here. It's one of the earliest walls. That would have been the old cottage. You can see by the, the um, it's over. It would be just piled on. Wow. And then this is it gets 900 years old, it's guys. Basically, that, that little wall is there. That's amazing. The earth is about a meter high. Mm hmm three foot high it's just normally it's about three foot every thousand years wow so, so, he's so that's why we're below the ground so been, and this is Beaconsfield that's how yeah. you say it Beaconsfield yeah not rather than Beaconsfield it would have started out as a little village uh, village hut hovel as they say a little uh, cottage where the alewife the Saxon alewife who's good at brewing beer so she they would have come to her to brew the beer and she then said well you you fix my shoes you cut my corn and in the end that's how the pub uh, became the pub because the the lady making the beer did the best job. It's it's a hand pump. A hand Should pump. Yes. A pint all the time, 45 degrees. Yeah. You want this in our ship. Yeah. No kind of like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm okay. left-handed. If you're right-handed, that's nah, different. Yeah. And, and when you just, when you just pour it steadily and gently. You're all the way, and then it's yeah, half, and then, and push then it back. oh, this is something different. So this is beer directly from the cellar, so it's coming out. Um, it's coming off. The piping goes straight to the cellar. Yes. So I didn't do the head right. Hey, it's okay there though. You go. You, you can push. Yeah. And it's naturally, it's naturally carbonated because it's it's a light product. It's like wine. It's still oh, it's a light beer. Super light. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> After the plague. They, 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 After they, they, they the like plague, that. dude. They, they we're talking about the they, plague. They were sure to start. Sixteen sixty-five. So they invented the hand pump so that you didn't have to have all the people walking around with jugs, filling up your glasses. What is your lesson? So you came to a bar. You self-served. Globalization. Wow. There you are. Well, they self-served. 
So, so they came to the bar because you name one 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 guy behind the bar could look after the customers instead of having someone pouring filling up the jugs yeah. from the beer for each person and then walking out then someone walking going around selling the beer at the guys at the table cheese package which you miss yeah oh man it's super airy falls apart it's almost like a, a pound of queijo <laughs> oh super light it literally is just like a puff of bread Not too salty. In Colombia, pal de bono, and then yeah, pal de queijo in Brazil. We always come here for lunch, go for a three hour walk, yeah. and come back for the sticky to toffee pudding and the chocolate fondue. Ooh. We sit at the five out table by the fire. But I haven't come now in six years. Yeah. Like up until 18, we'd come every single week. No, it was wet and cold. I didn't want to go for a long time. Yeah, for sure. But I used to always get the, the, the sausage, the Cumberland sausage, fish yeah. and chips, the baked camembert. Devil the kidneys. Pork, yeah. pork belly is really good. Pork belly as well. Yeah. Let's do one sausages. You want them fish and chips because I think we both are going to get fish and chips because yeah. it's like a must. Yeah. And then anything else you recommend that we should Cute. try? Kidneys. We'll do kidneys. Kidneys on fried bread? Yeah. You've got you to have some off. Some off. Well, that's a spotted dick. It's a spotted dick? Spotted dick is not on at the moment. I no. Woo! Hey, by the way, that's not, that's not real. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it's bread, right? No, it's it's a it's a pudding, it's a pudding with made of uh, raisins and currants. Okay. In a, in a sort of a sponge. And the dick just so, meant like spotted, right? Like it's well, like. Well, it would have come from Richard rather than Dick. Look <laughs> at this, guys. Carved right into the bar. That's insane. How long do you think it's been here? At least a hundred years. At least. More. More. Now, all this is like 900. Look, at it's falling apart. But it's at the same time, it's still like, dude, that's old wood. Yeah. You want to film your food being cooked? Yes. Yes, sir. Let's do this, it. This is Yash. Look. Yash is a film star in French television because they filmed his Yorkshire puddings. Oh, yeah? Yorkshire puddings? Yeah. They would love to have uh, fish and chips twice. And they like to see you cook it. Okay. And a kidneys and yeah, fried bread. Good. And a lamb shoulder. And a lamb shoulder. Yeah, lamb shoulder? Yeah. You guys gonna cook it? They wanna film it? Best fish and chips in England. Let's see. It's huge. Like you could literally share one between the two of you and get another dish. So it's good. that good, right? Yeah, it's, it's, oh, I mean, it's massive. It's massive. Come on, come on. We have this with long fish. Woo! I know, but there's something about it. Fish and chips is my favorite. That with an ale? Oh, that's oh, yeah. really British, bro. Yeah. I, I told you, Nima, I'm Brit, bro. A classic fish batter, come made from the air and soda. And there's beer in it? Yes. Wow. That's the murder pie? We had a TV series filmed here, it was about a detective, where there, all these murders happen every week. They filmed a, an episode in the film where the detective and the wife came for dinner in the pub. The wife said he should eat healthy, he should have a risotto, he should have salad. And he said, no, I want the pie, I want the pie. So he orders the pie, she orders the risotto. He gets called away, and when the waiter comes to the table, the waiter said, who's got the pie? And she went, oh, that's me. So, since then, we named it Midsummer Murder Pie. Dude, it looks amazing. The pie? Yeah, it looks so good. Look at, oh look at these pies. Uh, we, we, no, no, no. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, my gosh. Chicken, leek, and mushroom pie. I should, <laughs> this, is, this is too good, bro. Let's try and get one out without... Uh, because it's still soft, it's going to... Whoa, look. Enjoy it. Well, that crust. But that's a pie. It's a proper pie. Yeah, it's a proper pie. When you go, yeah, it's not a tart. It's a pie. And you can see. Oh man, the crust. Open it up. In your mouth. Oh, it's if hot. She, if she's done her work right. No if she's done her work right. The less water you put in, the softer it is to eat. Mix the fat and the 
the flour together. Wow. Just bind it with the water and therefore uh, it becomes then melts in the mouth. This is the best pie I've ever had. Go. No, you, I've had amazing pies. Now you understand why it's a uh, you know, meat pie. So you can have you can have beef steak in it. You can have. But it's creamy. It's earthy. Yeah, I mean, there's layers be, here. It should be uh, self gravying. The idea. It, 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 what it is is full of gravy. Yeah. Fucking crazy, bro. This is the best thing ever. I don't know how to explain this. You didn't get the bangers and mash. It's like the pie took over. Pies too much, bro. The ultimate pie. How, how big is that fish? Huge, it's a whole fish. <laughs> Dude, that fish is massive. So what are you making here? Uh, so these are devil kidneys. Um, so these are lamb kidneys. Uh, uh, so we pan fry it, get a nice sear on it. Then we mix it with our uh, devil sauce, we call it which is uh, ketchup, uh, mayonnaise, mustard, uh, some cayenne pepper for a nice little bit of heat and some gravy just to make a bit of a base with it. Wow, kidney steak. That's what this is, kidney steak. That looks amazing. So this is like a steamed pastry which will have kidneys uh, and steak inside. It's a suet pastry, so this gets steamed. It's a very traditional English Dude, that's amazing. What is that? Uh, that's steak and pudding. Oh, wow. Steak kidney pudding. But not, it's not like a dessert. It's a savory pudding. Yeah, yeah. Six seven hours overnight um, in red wine, uh, lamb stock, like uh, rosemary, garlic, all of that jazz. And you end up with a nice, really tender bit of lamb. Well, I say a little bit of lamb. It's a huge bit of lamb. <laughs> yeah, nice and healthy. It's deep fried bread. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's uh, like uh, fried bread. Yeah, I'm not a massive fan of. Uh, Kidneys myself. Where are you from? I'm originally. I my, my family's Irish as well. Irish uh, as well. I grew up in um, in East London. Oh, and then East London. Yeah, then I moved to Essex. So, uh, on a seaside town, I lived in Southend. Southend. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. your your accent, I haven't heard this accent. Is the Irish mixed with English? Uh, no, it's just English. I have a question. What's something outsiders should know? People that aren't from Great Britain or London. To try the food. Because a lot of Americans I've heard, like, they're like, oh, English food isn't this. It's a lot different. We do things in a different way. But, like, give it a go before you judge it. Like. What's your favorite English dish? That's a tough one. A brown ale. Brown ale. Probably a pint of beer. <laughs> Fish and chips and a pint of beer? Dude, it's gonna be it's gonna be an amazing meal. I like roast dinners. Roast dinners are nice. Like, roast dinners. Yeah, so like uh, so we do them on Sundays. Traditional Sunday dish. So, um, you have like your roast beef, roast potatoes, carrots, uh, uh, Yorkshire pudding. We call it. It's like a pan a baked pancake. It, it was Thanksgiving in a mouth. Yeah, they're, they're very British. So good. How many languages do you speak? Just one. Just one. I learned a bit. I worked in Norway for a bit, so. I oh, a bit of you don't speak cocky. Nah, nah, I don't know a few, I know a few, um, a few phrases. So, so tell me a phrase in cocky. Um, apple and pears, it means stairs. That's how you fell down the apple and pears. So I'm going up the apple and pears. Yeah, yes. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> wow. Looks like thick and sweet. My friends, this is the biggest fish and chips of my life. They say it's the best in England. Wow, look at that, cod.
Oh, we're doing the kidneys first. Kidneys with fried bread. Is this like this is such a? No. Oh, no. kidneys are good. Good organ. Heart and liver. Full of iron. And brain. <clears throat> Look, bro. This is how you're supposed to eat this. Just with this. <laughs> I know what your face looks like when you enjoy something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Been around you a lot enough now. Enough, right? <laughs> no, the fried bread. It's super hard, tough bread, but it has this gravy on it. Dude. Fried's good. <laughs> Deep fried bread. It's insanity. Yeah, it has a crust, but then it's mm. inside it's fluffy, but it's absorbed all this from the kidney. Look at that. Yeah, I mean, kidney, liver. It's super healthy. Have you sat in this room before? Yeah, we used to come sit here sometimes. Right there. By the fire. My dad would always say, just any table that's by the fire. So be here, there, or the one down there. And you've eaten everything we've eating, we're eating Not here. the kidneys, but the fish and chips and the lamb, yeah. Let's go to the fish and chips. This is bagalao. Cod. Dude, this is crazy. And they got this on the side. You have to have tartar sauce. <laughs> Dude, the portion is massive. Oh my gosh. The crust. Look at that. The breaded fish. It's a beer batter. Best fish and chips of my life, bro. Seriously. Best when do you find yourself. No, this is insane. And the, the batter is unique because it's with beer. Mm -hmm. Definitely would Can you taste the beer? Here's the beer, it's nice and oily though. The very bottom, look at all that. That's a very crust, like, that crunch. All right, you guys know I love blatantly promoting my sauce and I'm gonna do that right now. Some fish and chips in a 900 year old tavern. It tastes better with the sauce, bro. Oh yeah? Yeah. Timeless. What about the chips? Mmm. Chips and the sauce? No, but this tartar sauce. Look at the bottom. Your sauce. <laughs> I mean, the mix together is great. I hate having fish and chips without this. Nice creamy sauce. Best fish and chips, but also the biggest. Yeah. It's large. Mushy peas. And what's in this? Kind of a love hate thing. It's like, mom, I either like it or you don't. I don't love it. <laughs> I mean, that's no, it. no. Okay. Texture's weird, isn't it? You know what? The peas, man. I'm not a big fan. I'm not a fan of peas, yeah. You know what's amazing? Lately, every time I go on a trip, everybody's trying something new. But I mean, you're trying kidney for the first time. Mm -hmm. Here we have the lamb shoulder. It is massive. So tender, dude, it melts. He said they submerged the whole shoulder in red wine for eight hours. Eight hours? And submerged in red wine. I'm in all. I come here with an appetite. But it's so good. Like, I can understand why people go out into like super cold weather, have this meat, nice ales, call it a day. And come it. back with a dessert afterwards. <laughs> What's the one we're getting? Say so we gotta get one chocolate fondue and one sticky toffee pudding. Those two are just incredibly good. What do you think of that lamb shoulder? Super tender. And you can taste the red wine in it too, which is nice. Well, this is a retirement job for me. If I wasn't here, I'd be sitting at home watching British daytime television, which incorporates a lot of adverts for funeral plans and incontinence pads. So I'm actually a lot better off here. The pub itself is almost a thousand years old and it's a very interesting place to come and work. I work for, I have a very civilized shift. I work five hours a day, five days a week and uh, come in and meet and chat with interesting people like your good selves. I have the morning to myself, I have the evening to myself. I arrive here at half past 12. Then I stand behind the bar chatting to people, sometimes being a little rude to people, um, pulling pints, serving drinks. If I was told I was, I was gonna pass, but I could have one drink before I went, it would be a pint of old trip. It is magnificent, but you probably wouldn't like it being American. I liked it, I liked it. It's, it's a little light for me, but it's good, it's good. 
The pub was called The Ship for 600 years. When the Normans invaded us in 1066, this pub was here, or is it here as a Saxon drinking place, serving the road outside, which you probably thought was a little country lane, but in fact is a, was then a busy road. When the Normans came, they renamed the place The Ship, and it was called The Ship for 600 years until King Charles II used to see his mis some of his mistresses here. And from that point, we became known as the Royal Stand of England. We had a civil war as well. We had a civil war in, in the 17th century. This house came out in support of the king against the parliamentarians. And at one point, the parliamentarian forces arrived here and found a, a, a patrol of uh, Irish cavaliers, and they hanged them in the car park with a 12-year-old with a drummer boy. And, uh, and he's one of our ghosts now. One of the ghosts? Yeah, one of our so ghosts. So this place is haunted? So I'm told. I mean, they've never bothered me, I have to say. So downstairs we have the tavern, get beers, get food. What's upstairs right now? Uh, staff accommodation at the moment. Staff accommodation. Yeah, and yeah. and in, the, in the old days, this was a place where people would stop, sleep, and then continue on their well, way. Well, yeah, but, but unless you were of, of noble blood, you'd probably sleep on the floor in the bar with straw rather than a mattress. Ooh. There wasn't a bar. So, okay, so it would have been an open space. When it was a Saxon pub, they didn't have beer all the time. And the beer they had was probably pretty horrible because there would have been no hops in it. Oh, of course. So when, people, when, when the brew wife, the Saxon brew wife, brewed some beer, she'd put a sign outside, which was basically a, a pole with a bush on top, and that would tell people on the road that she had beer. They would then come in, but there would be no bar. They would sit at a table and they would get served their beer at the table in a jug or something like that. People could sleep the night, um, and, and, and apparently, very often did, but they got straw on the floor and not a bed upstairs. When the Normans came, there was nobody living around here. This, this, this countryside was empty. So they, caught, they, they, they designated this area Royal Deer Park, which meant the Norman barons hunted here. And people following the hunt would come and stay, use this place as accommodation. But as I've already emphasized, they got the floor, not a bed. Um, so it was a hunting resort during William yeah, the Conqueror they, time. Yeah, they would, they, would, they would hunt deer here and, and wild pig. Did they come up on horseback or like? Oh yeah, they'd be on horseback. Yeah, horseback. yeah. So they'd, there'd be a place to park the horses for the. So night, there was a stable. Them. There was a stable. The stable. Yeah. Yeah. So well, that was a stable on the left. That was a barn. The piece down the end there was a Norman barn, but whether it had been built then I don't know because the Normans built that end, that barn. So it wouldn't have been here when the Saxons were here. So what's the first piece of like? event that we know of of this bar that we like what's the oldest they can trace it yeah back? how old can it was in the doomsday book oh, the doomsday i don't know if you know about the doomsday yeah, yeah, book but when, when the Conquer, so yeah. when the when the normans came here they did an audit of everything they'd pinched from the saxons and this pub was 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 put in there as the ship Amazing. now the doomsday book was actually came out in 1086 so that's the first hard evidence we've got that there's a pub existing, and that was 1086. Strangely enough, we, had, um, we have ghost hunters come in here quite frequently. And the last one that came in spent all night here with very expensive recording equipment. And then the next day he said that all he'd recorded was American Voices, which he found a little bit out of kilter for a pub. That was, and then, he ripped, then we sort of pieced two and two together and said, well, there was a crash which killed a whole crew of Americans in the field next door. So Mario, maybe American Voices is what you might be expecting to hear. One of the things that killed the pub trade or damaged the pub trade was the fact that uh, smoking was banned in, in pubs. And people used to come out and they used to like to have a cigarette with their beer. And when they couldn't have a cigarette, they decided to stay at home where they could do both in large measure. Wow. And we're still losing huge numbers of pubs. Luckily, this pub ha has, has many other reasons for people to come. We're a, we're a, we're a, a destination pub. People will be coming from the north and the south and they'll meet here. People who bring friends or family over from the United States or Australia or New Zealand or South Africa will bring them here to show them a little bit of history. So we, we're a little bit protected against that, but that was, that's one of the huge changes. We've been here continuously since the 11th century and maybe before, who knows. So what we do, we've, we've dipped out of that argument and we call ourselves the oldest free house. Pubs in England are either tied in other words, they're tied to a brewery and they can only sell that brewery's beer or they're free and, we, and we're a free house. We can sell what we like and we're the old, definitely, without any, any uh, fear of argument, we're the oldest free house in England. Yeah, I, would, I would warn them that a British pint is 25% bigger than an American pint. But we're less alcohol. <laughs> we like our beer strong. Yeah. I, well, actually, you, the, the Americans could have done us a great favor. The Americans, have, especially the microbreweries, have started bringing out IPAs. Mm -hmm. Now, IPA is a, is a name that's been here for hundreds of years. 
is Santa India Pale Ale. And the reason it was different is because we were sending beer to India for the British troops who who were occupying India at the time. Was, uh, we, we had to put hops in it to preserve it for the long, for the long um, uh, uh, ship journey. So that's IPA. IPA was a distinctive beer that had hops in it because it was being sent to India. Now, if you'd only called it APA, American Pale Ale, or something like that, it would have been far less confusing because we have a lot of guys from your, your side of the world come in here and say, give me a pint of IPA, and I give them a pint of IPA, and they're really disappointed. <laughs> Because what they want is something that tastes of grapefruit. That's correct. That's amazing. Right here we have the original door of the tavern. This is the Saxon room. And all these tiles, they're medieval tiles. They were laid directly onto mud. Look, right here. Man. You'd have to duck through that door, David. No, no, it's five inches. Five inches? Yeah, yeah. Five inches. So, like, no matter what hit. Oh, my God. <laughs> you weren't cut out for Norman Conquest. I love this place. You got Guinness everywhere. The maps, fire, on oh, pyro, I'll just keep adding. All right, let's go. Talking about coasts, at the early part of 2023, so not many months ago, about five o'clock in the afternoon, 5.30 in the afternoon, some people came in and they bought some drinks and they took them down and sat next to that big fire down there. And within five minutes, they got up from their seat, left the drinks and left the pub. So they went out through that door, and one of my colleagues went out this door and said, is there anything wrong? They said, well, we've just seen someone walking out the fire. What? What? We've just seen someone walking out the fire, they said. So they left the pub. Now, I didn't see anything, but the story so There's ghosts here. The story is there's they left ghosts. the pub. There's ghosts. Do you believe there are ghosts? No. I, I'm, I'm prepared to accept there might be. See, I don't know whether I believe in ghosts or not, but if, if they're here, I don't want to offend them. That's the yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially at night when you're in the we bathroom. We love you, like, ghosts. Oh we love you. Please don't harm us. Oh Stuarts, of which Charles II was one, was, were a Scottish royal family. So they, they were the people that combined the lion, which is the national animal of England, and the unicorn in the royal standard. So hence... Uh, and, and the French writing is there because French was the language of the court since the Normans came. Wow. You're throwing ghosts. Now, this, it, the, I had an assistant manager who utterly was convinced so what can i say what can i say for they their, didn't stick around for long <laughs> for them for them it was true because yeah. they well they seem to antagonize a, a plate throwing poltergeist or presumably uh, it's a plate throwing i had mediums have come here and they've said um that uh, there's an old lady there's a young boy there's you know um, and we also get ghost hunters coming. I, I was in, I was interviewed. I was interviewed on the radio about this pub some time ago, and the interviewer asked me about ghosts. I said, "Well, I'm not sure that there's ghosts. I've never seen one." He said, "I have." He said, "When I was a teenager, I was in your pub, and I walked into the toilets, and there were two cavaliers in there, so I left." Sticky toffee f pudding. Ooh, it's on fire. Healthy stuff. Yeah, look at that. There you go. He knows. That. Melts it. Melts it. There you have to do like that. Melt it throughout. So it's a toffee, uh, toffee sauce, from, yeah, it's caramel, and you've got dates in there. And right here we have vanilla. The vanilla, vanilla ice cream. That smells amazing. Uh, chocolate, hot chocolate. Well, pudding. as in we would get two of each and then share it as a family. Mm. Oh, the contrast? Caramel. Toffee's a caramel. Same thing? Yeah, caramel. Yeah, it's just Is it, Bonte? You, you cook the sugar so it starts to turn colour, take it off the heat, and then you pour in cream. That's nice, nice man. Almonds. Oh, it's just, just nice. melts in your mouth. You see? This is amazing. Yeah. So good. It's a sticky toffee club. I mean, <laughs> after that fish and chips, this is like <laughs> heaven, man. Because that was like, yeah. that was a lot. And a beer, and a beer. Which do you prefer, the fondant or? Uh, I think this, 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 the sticky toffee. I've moved the fondant to... It's the, sticky. You know, that was the royal standard of England. 900 years in a bottle. This is one of the oldest pubs in London. Yeah, Old Cheshire Cheese since 1667. Come here, look at this. Tells you how long it's been. Like all the different kings and queens that have come through. Look at all of that. All the way to him. This is amazing. Let's go inside. Woo! I need a strong ale right now. An ale, some fish and chips. It feels like you're walking in the 17th century alley right here. So this is Simona. She Hi works guys. here at this incredible establishment. Thank you for that. Thank you. So Hi Simona, guys. 
Tell me about the pub. So we're one of the oldest pubs in London. We've initially been here since 1538, rebuilt in 1667 after the Great Fire of London. We are a massive place, as you can see right here. Uh, we have a total of one, two, three, four bars and two restaurants. So you can imagine it's a big of a a massive maze in here to put it that way. Uh, we are very well known for fish and chips. We actually get a lot of people coming from New York for our fish and chips for some reason. Oh wow. So it must be quite good if everyone from there comes here. Um, and yeah, we're pretty much very well known for a very weird number of reasons. We've got a famous parrot, we've got a famous cellar all the way to the bottom, and we used to have a famous brothel as well. How about the ales? Oh, the ales are to die for. So we've got a very traditional oak cask handful ale. So you can imagine the flavor of that. You can imagine the full body of that. Uh, oops, sorry. So it's something that you can't be here and not have it. And that's 100%. brewed here? That is brewed here. So all of our actually lagers, all of our stouts, all of our ales, they're all brewed in UK. So they're all as traditional as they can be. So we got four bars. We have very limited time. <laughs> I'll do my best here, but you said uh, service for dinner starts at 5. It does. So we have a little break between 3 to 5. So if you're here at 5 o'clock, I'll be more than happy to have you guys over okay. and enjoy some food with us. Perfect. Yeah. So this is Old Brewery Bitter Oak Cask. Samuel Smith. Not Samuel Adams, Samuel Smith. Not, yes, yes. Looks amazing. Looks like a wheat ale. Like it's like cloudy in there. It's an amber. Uh, it will just take a little time to set. Mm hmm. There we go. Oh, dude, I love how dark it is in here. Right? It really gives you that 17th century charm. Yeah. And how many different beers are there? Because you have pale ale, brown ale, porter, so you have all that there? Or? Uh, oh, yeah. All of those are in our fridge. Uh, is, and is this all produced here, or is this from other breweries? Uh, all produced in Yorkshire by uh, Sam, uh, Sam Smith. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I got that it's settled. It's still going. It's almost like a Guinness. It takes a while. Yeah, yeah. The wait. It's worth the wait. Right, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. Fire whisperer. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna stay right over here by the fire. <laughs> What's your name? My name Neil. Neil. David. David. Hi, David. Pleasure. Nice to meet you here. What are you up to? We're traveling around London, uh, exploring, enjoying. I'm making a movie. Making movies. Many movies. Nice. Are you English? Yeah, I'm local. Yeah. You're local. Oh, great. Not yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Like, do you come here often? Uh, in winter, because of the fire. It's not my summer pub. I've got a summer pub as well. It's my winter pub, because of the fire. It's your winter pub. So you're always here, hanging by the fire? It's no music. Chillax, relax place. Yeah. Interesting people pass through. Of course. Yeah, it's a nice place. And what are you drinking today? I'm drinking Taddy. Taddy? Taddy. Oh, what's so the the brewery is Samuel Smith, it's from Yorkshire. Actually, I'm from, originally from Yorkshire. Oh, so you're Yorkshire local? Yeah, Yorkshire. So Taddy is a tag caster. It's a town in North Yorkshire. So yeah, it's good beer. It's good beer. The main thing is that we're just, we're just trying to understand what the culture is. That's what we want to know. We want to... Yeah, I mean, especially this, this place that survived so many important things that have happened in history right here in London. And it's still here. Like with these walls can talk, you know. The problem today is that when you tell stories, right, in a pub, people get their, get their smartphones out and they fact check. Mm. And the point, the point of coming to a pub and telling stories is that um, you should never let the truth get in the way of a good story. <laughs> Right. Uh, and what the problem with pubs now is people get their phones out and check, and check. what you're saying is the truth. So I could tell you all kinds of bullshit and you could leave here believing it, but you're more likely to check it on your phones. It spoils the story. It does, it does. Uh, how old are these? Oh, this was 200 years old. 200 years of sitting there. Function was available at the bar. So, in terms of the other bars, uh, anything interesting to see over there? Oh, have you been downstairs yet? I haven't been anywhere else oh, yet. The, the downstairs is where the old cellars were, so it's got really big, vast uh, <coughs> private dining rooms up there. Mm -hmm. Normally, the people book them out for like, small parties or something. 
downstairs is a big cellar bar, so a lot of people go down there. It's probably Christmas parties, work Christmas parties happening oh. you know, around London. People are having drinks with colleagues. I love the, how it's like stained. Well, originally this, this was all cleaned off about 30 years ago when I first came to it. This was all yellow. Oh wow. And it was yellow because of the nicotine. So it had 300 years of smoking. So when they, they came to clean it all down, they had to scrape it off and it was coming up quite thick. Ooh. So it was 300 years of nicotine. 300 years of smoking in it. When I first came here, I thought it had been painted yellow, but in fact it was just all yellow because of nicotine. So in the old days, everybody was smoking pipes and so the whole place was just a Oh, just walking in here, imagine. Everybody's sweating, they're smoking so your face. So when they scraped it all down, the bare wood, so they had to paint it back on this dark colour. So, Yes, it was a really strange yellow. Yeah. <laughs> For many years. Where are you guys from? Ireland. Dublin. The Irish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's the Guinness at? Make us look good. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Come on. Come what, are you, what are you guys drinking today? We're not quite sure. <laughs> You're not quite sure? We're going to see Australian Pink Floyd and the Hammersmith audience. Oh, yeah? Yeah. The only land is at 9 o'clock this morning, so here we are. Here we are. I landed here six days ago, I haven't stopped. It's just video, is it? Yeah, yeah. Where, hey, where, where's Colin at? Where's Colin at? Colin Farrell. Colin Farrell. Is he there? That's Colin. It's Colin. He left. He's pointing at him. That's your wee bear. That's wee bear for John. I'll just charge you for half. My man, I think I'm going to try that porter. The, uh, by the bottom. Hey, is it by bottle or? Yeah, we have a stout uh, on tap. You have a stout on tap? I'll do the stout on tap. Let's do a stout. And then we're gonna go down to the cellar. All right, got my stout. Mm. Not like a Guinness though, right? No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> it's actually a really nice stout. Now we're going down to the cellar bar. Bro, you gotta careful your head. It's like, oof. Oh wow, this is the bar. Wow, so the cellar, mind your head everywhere. Come. Hey bro, it's like scary. Can you like, like imagine if you were here 300 years ago, drinking ale, stuck, and then everybody's like, hey, there's a fire. It's like, what? Well, how do you get out of here? Bro, look at that, it's amazing. You know, I was reading a book about uh, beer and how it was created, like every, like the stages of beer in history. In 13th, 14th, 15th century, uh, ales had a huge advancement here in Great Britain. And that's why these pubs were invented, because the beers were good back then here. And obviously, you boil the water, you know the water's good for you. There's a cellar. It's great. Drink ales, they make you strong. Look, they have, they have a bar menu. House olives, homemade scotch eggs, burgers, sharing boards. I, I'll say something though. This stout is good. It's really good. And it's like six pounds. Not that bad. <laughs> Not that bad, Miami. That's a Miami mind in me. Horrible. It is. Samuel Smith. Beer brewed at Yorkshire House, oldest brewery. Dude, Yorkshire's oldest brewery. 1758. Best thing ever are British ales. British ales are the best ales. Hands down. Mind your head, bro. Wow. Is it oh, raining? Is the photographer here? Oh, here you are. Okay. Uh, is it raining? Oh, look. Rebuilt, 1667. So where's the other place? How, how much of a walk? Minor, it's down uh, this way, I think down to the right here. What'd you think of this bar? It was amazing. Did you think Charles Dickens and uh, some of the other great writers were here? Mark Twain, they're all here drinking, getting literary inspiration. And the founder, of course, of the dictionary. Who knew that, right? It's amazing. Let's go there. Look at these lights. Beautiful, like little cocoons. After an eight minute walk, we found the year old in Mitre, 1546. This is considered to be the oldest tavern or pub in all of London, down this little alleyway. 
Let's see. I'm sure they have good beer. Fuller's beer? Wow. Good thought. Behind all that, that like modern skyscrapers, the buildings, you have this old house. Dude, I love the glass. Literally all home. 500 years. This bar is packed. It's so many people. It is like too much. There's actually two functions going on right now, private functions. So we can't go into two of the main rooms. We're gonna stay over here. I'm gonna get a beer. Oh yeah, just about the bar, like when it was founded, when it was founded. Like, yeah. I mean, what's, what's super, the craziest thing you've seen? Is it haunted? I mean, anything you know about it. Yeah. If you're an idiot American like we are. Is, something so you're asking me if the place is haunted? <laughs> No, no, we're not. So, well, I mean, generally, if people ask me to haunt it, I say, I've been here 200 years, I've never seen a ghost. Which is a pretty obvious bar bartender answer. I, every pub I've worked in, they've said, is there a ghost? I've never seen one. I mean, I've been here a couple of years. Um, I wanted to work here a lot before. This place is just great. I mean, founded in 1546. Uh, this square here is the original footprint of the pub. Uh, it used to be where, to, I go back a bit, around here it was all gardens for the Palace of Ely. So where the work is finished, they'd come here, and they'd come in, and they'd have their drink. Bear in mind, I'm not going to keep looking at you, because I'm working, I'm always looking. <laughs> so they come and have their drink here, and then as it got built up, they built this part, and then they extended that, and then they put the new modern part on the front in the 1700s. Yeah. Older than your government. We'll go that way. <laughs> so there's a few people in your country that disagree how old your country is. <laughs> really nice hats. That's the fellas. Yeah, they built it up there, and then... They extended with this and then they extended the back way that way. <coughs> oh, from the house. So that's why it looks like this. So the pub was here, the little alleyways all the way around. They basically built everything around it. And now we're one of the most hard to find pubs. Are there any famous patrons? Anyone famous that used to drink here? I don't know anyone that comes in. Charles Dickens or someone like that? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, he was there. Yeah, Henry, Henry VIII for the two years he was alive. Yeah, he was definitely. Yeah, see, look, there's. We, we left a photo of him over there. <laughs> yeah, Henry was definitely, Elizabeth, yes, yeah, uh, Samuel Pepys, yeah. Um, trying to think of other Guy, old Guy people. Fox, Guy Fox. Yeah, Guy Fawkes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. What I generally say is just prove otherwise. <laughs> I don't know. Black Adder, you know, just a little. Ah, so, oh, yeah. BBC America, yeah. That's right, that's right. Red Dwarf, Red Dwarf. Oh, Red Dwarf's amazing. In terms of the beer, what is right. the uh, Fuller's of the brewery? Right, so it's a Fuller's pub. Uh, so it's owned by Fuller's, but we're going to get lots of guest ales as well. We're known for our cask ale, traditional English ale. So Fuller's is their flagship beer. So Fuller's Pride is their flagship beer, named after a flower that sprang out of the wreckage of the Blitz in the Second World War. So the London Pride was a tiny little flower. So, um, and really get no, we haven't got any other Fuller's beers at the moment. Don't tell the boss. <laughs> Fried. Whiskey cast. Thristly. Scotch cider. <laughs> I'm like, well, it's a cider. <laughs> they also have some guest beers as well. It's not just these beers. You see? One of them, one of them. Yeah. Norwegian Red Ale. I might go with the Valhalla. Nate, cider, and we sit down? In the oldest pub in London. It's funny, everybody's looking at me, they're like, who is this guy? What are you drinking tonight? I'm drinking Guinness. You're drinking Guinness. You know, that was my introduction to beer, Guinness. My Ooh, first beer. a harsh introduction. Oh, it's the best introduction ever. I only like dark. Alright, let's go. My yeah. man, here we go, here we go. Alright, so what's the local beer? What is the beer of the house? Right, we are renowned for our cask out. So it's just the British cask. We're the fullest pub, so London Pride is on all the time. We got lots of festive stuff as well. What, what do you normally drink? I drink darks, but... Dark stuff? That. It's from York. It's a stroop waffle milk stout. Very good. 
Taste a bit. Yeah, I'll taste a bit. But I feel like I need to do one of these. The London so Pride. That, that's, that's an eye. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like an, an amber color. An amber color. Okay. What he's going to give you is stout, which is like a guinea. Uh, uh, it's a super milk stout. Ruby lactose. The joy. What I do is uh, have them all and start alphabetically. Dude, this one's amazing. It's, it's, it's yeah, go through the sweet pints. though. Uh, sweet. So how do you sell? You sell 12 ounces in a pint? That, that, that's, half or a pint. Oh, so let me get a half of this and a half of this. And my, my man here wants a cider? Cider? I mean this one, this one. Yeah, yeah, this one. one the whisk cask. Yeah. yeah. So give him the tallest one for that. You gonna go for a pint? Yeah, he's gonna do a pint. 6.7. Let's do it. That's, that's gonna be wicked. Yeah? Oh yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Are you local? I used to be. Yeah, I live in uh, Market Harbour, which is in the Midlands. Okay. Our local brewery is ever asked. Really good tiger beer. But uh, I, I lived in London for about 20 years, but periodically coming He lived in London for 20 years. By the way, I can barely hear him. That's how loud it is in here. Yeah. It's like... No, I, so I... Uh, yeah. Right here. Your main course. So these... Dessert. So this is Fuller's London Pride. This is Stout. And then over here is the Cider. So thank you. Where are you guys from? Uh, from Miami. All oh, right. Yeah. What? Wow. That looks amazing. That looks like a champagne. Yeah, it looks so good. So good. Cider. So Eng England's known for ciders and it's ales. Oh, ales, definitely, yeah. What do you I've prefer? Got, I've got uh, ales myself. Ales, yeah. Yeah, I drink cider when it's very hot. Just tap on the top, my friend. But, uh, yeah, so I've got the relatives out in uh, two, two points. Two points. I'm just going to have to do it right here, bro. <laughs> Double fisting. Guys, uh, Dude, this is amazing. What an experience here. This is why I came to London, for this experience. Try the beers, yeah. For, for, no, for the experience with the locals, you know, with the English. Okay. London's Pride, nice red ale. Light. Mm, this is sweet. This is, this is like a, a super decadent stout. It, it's way sweeter than the Guinness. It's a Scottish uh, sort of stout. Yeah, it's a Scottish stout. Hey, cheers. I'll do it myself. Too full to cheers. A cider, you mean a cider. Oh, wow, it's amazing. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> It's not too sweet, it's the right amount. Yeah, the drier the better. Yeah, the drier the better. Looks dry, My yeah, dad yeah. Makes English hard cider at home. That's crazy. His, his passion is exotic fruit trees, so he loves apples and things like that. So he makes it, yeah. But you sound like you're not from England. What? Oh, we're not from England, we're American. Ameri yeah. what, what are you doing? You're doing an English pub, are you? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're doing the, the oldest pubs. It's a great pub. It's the best pub. As you know, this pub is older than America. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And this person has been in this pub for longer than America <laughs> has existed. <laughs> 1546, he's been here since 1231. Yeah. <laughs> so you're saying he's Dracula? <laughs> no, I'm going. I'm following. I'm Ed. Ed. Yeah. And where are you from? I'm from uh, near Nottingham. It's a bit <laughs> a bit more rural than Nottingham. From Nottingham, okay. And so tell me, how is the city? I mean, I told you that we came here 20 years ago, things have changed, but places like this stay the same. Yeah, so what I mean is, so obviously the people here change a lot, um, especially the demographics change a lot, but places like this where we're staying right now don't change at all. The history stays the same, so the culture stays a lot of the same. Um, but the people, the practices, stuff like that, change so much. What's your favorite part of London? Favorite thing in London? Personally, my favorite thing in London is the fact that there's so much. Uh, do you mind? No, we need to. <laughs> no, no, we're not doing that. Sure. No, we're not doing that. Oh, right. <laughs> That's what this is. <laughs> Enjoy it. But personally, my favorite part about being in London is that the demographics are so diverse. It's so diverse here. I, w I was walking down the street to come to this pub today, and we s we must have heard. 10 different languages as we come down the street as by, by ourselves at all I and mean, then we come in here there's a few different languages in here lots of different people in here um, but the most important thing is 
we're all in here being in the same place that is a place that's been here for I mean maybe a thousand years it's a very 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 old pub very old pub probably, 500 for sure. probably older than USA is what I'm trying to say 100% yeah so this is a is it a location of significant culture is what I'm trying to say uh, but the important thing about the city is that it will bring lots of diverse people into places like this and I think that's very important in terms of a from a cultural sense I think that's a very important thing to have every neighborhood is different you have little Middle East you have little Polsky you have every what's happening here? <laughs> I, I love it bro we're, we're here mixologists are you mixologists if it's not paid for you can't do it oh you can't do it. are you are you yeah yes oh, okay it's mixologists no, it's not a paid advertising. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries, no worries. Very good. Yeah, look. Three pounds for a half ale. You know what? It's not bad. It used to be three pints. Three pence? Three pence? <laughs> back, back in Henry the Eighth time. Yeah, 200 years ago. That one's from Sheffield. It's Moonshine Abbeydale Brewery in Sheffield. They're really good as well. Oh, wow. Yeah, really light, fresh. Yeah. It's one of my favorites. It's one of your favorites, huh? Where are you from? Me, Croydon. Croydon? Croydon. Croydon, where's Croydon? South London. Okay. Right in the south. What language do you speak? What language do I speak? You speak slang, like super slang? <laughs> I know a little bit of Cockney rhyming slang, but not much. I'm not a Cockney. You have to be born within the sound of the Bow Bells to be a true Cockney. And what does that mean? Bow Church, and they have the Bow Bells. And if you are born, I think it's like a three mile radius, any of the hospitals within that, class is a true cockney. The one place we have to go. We have to go. Next time we come to London, we go. If you go in the front bar, literally open the door, turn right, there's a glass case with a black beam in it. That's a cherry tree. Uh, it's holding up the front of the building. So it's built in when they extended the front in the 1700s. Uh, Queen Elizabeth I danced the Maypole around it. What? <laughs> what? What? Yep. It used to mark the boundary of Cambridgeshire and London. So this pub was originally not part of London. Because the Bishop of Ely in the palace over there was Ely is in Cambridgeshire. So he decreed that this would be part of Cambridgeshire, which was fine until the old villains realized they could come in and they couldn't get nicked. So in the early 80s, they changed it back. But the land, land person here used to have to go to Cambridge to go and get their license. Wow. There's many more hey, history bits. Thank you for that. That was You made my day, bro. Thank you. There's a lot more history here, but it's going to take me ages to tell you. I'll come back next time, dude. Come I'll come back. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> All right. Just in the glass case, there's a little sign about it. Oh, wow, there it is. So much history. I am like in awe right now. She said Queen Elizabeth the first. So Henry the eighth, second daughter, Queen Elizabeth, golden age. She went right around this thing? Dude, right around this thing? Where are you guys from? Uh, here. Here, from London. Well, oh, this bar. This bar. <laughs> Cheers to that. Cheers to that. You guys are funny. <laughs> Cheers. According to the bartender, he just told me now the movie Snatch was also filmed right in this bar. So throw that in the history books as well. Are you all local? Londoners? Yes. Um, Ish, yeah. Yeah. Ish. Ish. Yeah. Little way out. Little way out. Yeah. So I don't know England. I need to come back and really explore. Everybody's been telling me where they're from. I'm like, I, ha I can't put it on the map. Okay. Where are you from? Where? What area? Uh, Brighton. Brighton. Rice Lake. Rice Lake. Wow. Heathrow Airport. Heathrow Airport. Yeah. So do you go to South Hall a lot to eat Indian food or no? South Hall. South Hall's not that far from us actually. Yeah, that's right there. Yeah, very nice. I live there. We don't. We don't go. No, we. I go. I'm crazy. Nice big samosas. Yeah, I know the Indian food's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So where do you live, Dad? I'm from Miami. Right, okay. I'm Florida, Florida. Okay, when, you live, when you're here, where do you go? Sherlock, sure, like 221 Baker Street, sort of area. Baker Street, Between the two parks, okay. like yeah, right in the middle. Between the two parks. Oh, Hyde Park. Yeah. Hyde Park. Oh, nice. You know when people are drunk because they say, yeah, you're drunk, you're you're drunk. I know, I, I am, I'm saying I'm drunk. My brother lives in America. Where? Do you know him? Yeah, do you know him? <laughs> <laughs> Ohio. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. oh, the glamour. 
it's bad. The glamour. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the only good thing that came out of there was LeBron James, but <laughs> LeBron James. Basketball. He's from Akron. Akron. You never heard of LeBron? Yeah. Yeah. Kill him! Uh, it's uh, like uh, Michael uh, Jordan. Run sport, dude. Run sport. We wouldn't understand yeah, basketball. Yeah, yeah. No, you understand basketball. We know David Beckham though in Miami. Yes. Yes. David Beckham. We have David. So, so my name's David, and I've been like hitting up David Beckham for a while. I'm like, yo, what's up? What's up, me? What's up, me? I love him. I love him. Ooh. Do I take my shirt off here? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do it. Do it? No, I can, I can show you like a little. We're, we're very conservative here. Yeah. Big Norway. I know, I know. <laughs> so I have a lot. I have a lot of writing. <laughs> I can't take it off. If I take off my shirt, you don't notice. No, no, you sign on whatever you have, like, But it's all like inspired by David. When I was young, I, w I watched him. I was in Madrid when he like moved to Madrid. And I was like, wow, this guy, you know, he's amazing. He's his figure and he's getting tattoos. So are you into soccer? I'm into soccer, yeah. yeah. Are you? Yeah. Who, 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 who do you root for? Arsenal. Arsenal. What about Tom? So, yeah, no, so, 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 no, 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 no. So my, yeah, my, my brother, who lives in America, is, is a top yeah, That's why he has to live in America. Yeah, that's why yeah, yeah. we banned him. Why do people support certain people for neighborhoods? For, yeah, for, mostly. I, I don't have any affinity, but um, it is from... Um, your childhood, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Your dad. And, and, and yeah, your dad's Spurs. Yeah, I've been Arsenal yeah. fans since 71. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's all, all Spurs and Arsenal. But are they in your neighborhood? Because that's, that's how they're divided, no, right? No, like, they're, they're, the, they're the nearest big club to where I live. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, like Watford, Wimbledon. So, how many clubs are there? Nine? No? Like, I think it's seven or nine. It's, it's a big number. Yeah. It's multiple teams. Yeah, Tottenham, yeah. Chelsea. And the rivalry. Yeah. Huh? The rivalry fierce. fierce. Yeah. I didn't go to a game. We were thinking of going to a game, but it was like the timing was wrong. So we've got our nephew coming over, who's coming over from Ohio, in uh, on Monday, and he's an Arsenal supporter. He's yeah, he's he's mega Arsenal supporter, isn't he? And he, and he knows everything about yeah, he knows well, the whole team. Yeah, he's he's a, a real sort of Arsenal supporter. So, so we'll do the yeah. tour of the stadium. Yeah, so we yeah, so we got a tour one of the stadium day. and a game on yeah. Sunday the seventeenth. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, I have a question because they were telling me that now Christmas coming around. Everybody's ending the day like at 2.30, 3, going out to the pubs. Is that what we're doing now? Ending early, it's Christmas time. November. I love it. Start early. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That's what we're yeah. doing today. It's, yeah. It's yeah. So, yeah, so we're having a, um, a Christmas day out with. Uh, so these two are cousins. I'm just the interloper. Yeah. I thought you'd be wife. Yeah, I thought you were married to him. I'm oh, sure we married. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you did. So, yeah. So yeah, so we do yeah Christmas stuff. Yeah. Oh, where where, where do you point us? What direction are you pointing? Uh, we're going straight over there, and then turning right or left when we get to the Strand. Haven't decided we're going to Okay. A lot of pubs down. I might follow you. <laughs> okay, we're we're going in a minute. <laughs> It's a lot of pressure. Oh my god, oh my god you've got us. I, I need fish and chips or something else. Have you not had fish and chips? I, I was gonna go back to the. Yeah, 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 we've had it, we've had it. We've had fish and chips. How long have you been here? Uh, six days so far, yeah. This is the first time in London? A uh, third time in London, first time in a decade. Wow. Yeah. So I've seen like a very different London. And, yeah, yeah, and yeah. now, post COVID, yeah. post Brexit, it is different. Take care. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you, thank Enjoy you. That break. was really funny.